welcome to the uh, latest installment of my six input hot end uh, which is here this is my latest example uh, obviously I've abandoned mixing now so it hasn't got the mixing chamber and um, that's just the hot pot there's the um, cooler block it goes on like that that's complete assembly with the mount and everything so, um, what I particularly want to talk about, which I'm quite excited about, is this plate here, uh, which is a heat break. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, this crazy old man has finally gone completely crazy. Why the hell would you want to put a heat break in the middle of a hot end? Uh, well. Um, first off, here's a, here's a picture of the plate itself. So it's made of stainless steel, and then um, each side I've machined a chunk of it out, leaving just a square bit in the middle, about 12 mil square, with a hole for the filament. And being stainless steel, stainless steel is a poor conductor, um, so it acts as a um, as a heat break to uh, to some extent. It's not um, designed to be 100% efficient um, or anything like that. But why would I want to do that? Well, um, rewind a bit. So I printed with this without the plate. Um, and it's fairly good. Um, it's got promise. I haven't done much in the way of actual printing. I've been mostly doing uh, test prints to evaluate things like pressure advance and retraction and stuff like that and temperatures. So the first thing I came across was um, pressure advance. With the uh, with the diamond, I was using around about 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Um, it needed an awful lot of pressure advance or pressure compensation, I prefer to call it. Um, so when I started testing this one, I started with a value of about 0.3, and I thought I'll work up from there. Um, and it was pretty grim. <laughs> the print, and as I uh, and as I a bit difficult to evaluate exactly what was going on at the beginning and end of the lines and uh, as I increased it further thinking it's starting starting from a low base uh, the more I increase it well it didn't make much difference in fact it seemed to get worse and then I started to decrease it and things started to improve and I got all the way down to sort of point one, and it was printing very much better um, in fact it, you know it's debatable whether it needs any pressure compensation at all Whereas the geometry isn't that much different to a diamond five color, um, so that was a little surprising. Um, so then I looked at the um, the differences between my design and the diamond five color. So here's a here's a picture of the diamond five color, and um, as you can see, the if you look at the um, one of the filament paths, it's essentially it's a hole. 24mm deep, 0.4mm diameter. Um, and then another hole, 21mm deep, 0.2, no, sorry, 2mm diameter. So we've got a 2mm diameter hole, 21mm long, and then a further 0.4mm diameter, which will be another another 3mm, because it goes to 24mm deep. And then on the actual nozzle tip itself, we got 0.4 mil diameter, 2 mil deep. So each filament has got a section at the end of it, each input, that's 5 mil long, and the diameter of the nozzle, 0.4 mil. And if we look at um, a typical nozzle, like a, an E3D V6, one here, that I scraped off the internet, you can see that the um, the restricted diameter is is only about 0 0.9 or around about one mil or less in length. So my hot end um, doesn't have a section like the diamond has got. It's 1.8 mil diameter all the way through the filament path right up to the nozzle, right up to the, the end of the the end of my hot end effectively, where the nozzle screws in. It's all 1.8 mil, which means I don't have 
that restriction that the diamond has got in mind I've only got the restriction of the nozzle itself so I'm thinking that the reason the diamond needs so much let's call it pressure compensation but it's it's pressure advanced in rep rep fermi is because it's got this long restricted section five mil long compared to a, a normal v6 nozzle or which it, it which is what my hot end uses whereas that restricted section is only like 0.9 mil long so it sounds reasonable to me is the reason why my hot end doesn't need huge amounts of pressure compensation but a diamond five color does so now having said that um mine uh my hot end it, it does tend to ooze quite a lot as the filament's warming up the diamond five color does a fair bit as well um but it's fair to say that mine is worse than the five color but if mine hasn't got this um restriction that the five color has that would explain that so it oozes a bit I think that's a kind of feature of a, of a mixing hot end because um, however you do it you've got to get multiple inputs to end up at a single point um, which means you're going to have longish filament pass and a reasonably high volume certainly much more than a, um, a standard hot end would have so because of this oozing it needs a, a fair amount of retraction and when I was doing retraction tests I basically print two square towers spaced some distance apart and then I see what's happening as the print head moves away from one tower and starts printing the next so what was ha what I was getting was um, I got up I needed quite a bit of retraction around about four mil and um, I got to the point where there was no stringing on the tower that it was just finished but I was getting a little blob on the tower that it was just starting um, so I had this bright idea <laughs> of um, rather than increasing retraction further use asymmetric retraction so retract 4 mil, but only unretract 3.5 that means I wouldn't get the stringing on the tower that it's just finished and it might reduce the blob when it unretracts on the tower it's about to start um, which sounds a perfectly reasonable and logical thing to try um, except that what I failed to realise um, with a mixing hot end you have to retract all the filaments um, otherwise if you if you only retract one filament instead of pulling the filament from the nozzle tip it pulls it from one of the other inputs so you have to retract them all together so that was the flaw in my reasoning for using asymmetric retraction was because all the filaments got retracted four mil but only unretracted three and a half mil and so as the print progressed after a number of those cycles the um, unused filaments were basically being pulled out of the hot end by half a mil every retract unretract cycle um, so no matter what I did in terms of trying to tune the retraction it, things just got worse and worse and worse because effectively there's a great big air, air gap on these unused filaments so they weren't doing anything and eventually um, I, I aborted that print and decided to sleep on it and then the next day I went to have a look and I could see because I used clear Bowden tubes I could see the filaments were only um, had come completely unloaded from the hot end and then I realized the error of my ways so I've had to um, strip the hot end and clean it all up because it pulled hot filament all up into the cold bit of the heat breaks and, and everything else. Anyway, I digress. Um, so I have this kind of oozing issue. Then what happens with filaments in a mixing hot end, they're all held at print temperature, regardless of whether they're moving forward or not. And PLA is especially uh, problematic because it starts to hydrolyze, um, i.e. it becomes more and more runny less and less viscous um, until it's almost as runny as, as water it really gets really runny so when one is printing PLA with a mixing hot end if you change color and, and want to print a different color it's very important you move you, you purge that 
filament out because it will become really runny and when you start to use it you get this horrible runny blob appear on the print and then you get nothing because it's evacuated the melt chamber and then eventually it sorts itself out. So that's when I had this bright idea of um, fitting a heat break in between the hot block which is um, that bit there with the heater in it and this is the combining block uh, and this, so this is obviously the cold section um, because that normally has a cool around it um, <clears throat> and then the filament goes in here and then normally this is all heated this combining block and the hot block so all that lot has got molten filament in it by putting a heat break in there I've effectively reduced the temperature of this uh, combining block for want of a better word um, I wasn't at all sure how good that will be or, or not so I ran some tests um, put it together like this um, and before I put it together I put a little thermocouple down through the tube and all the way down so I got one right at that point there at the end of the combining block and another one at that point there at the top of the combining block and then of course I've got the thermocouple, the thermistor I should say, in the hot block itself. I heated the, um, heated the hot end to 185, which is what I tend to print PLA at, um, again with a mixing hot end, because you've got such a big volume, I've found that you actually use quite a bit lower temperature than manufacturers recommend. I've yet to print proper temperature towels with this hot end to see if that's still the case, but it used to be with the diamond. So I basically heated the hot end to 185 and then um, took a note of the temperatures at those two points and then let it soak. So here's the, uh, here's the result of my temperature tests. When the hot end first reaches 185, the temperature at the, um, the bottom of the combining block is only 75 and at the top is 72. Um, and then with the hot end maintaining 185, um, the temperature at the combining block slowly increases until it, after about 10 minutes or so, it's got up to 148. So that's about 37 degrees colder. And then I increased the temperature to 210, and I just let it soak at that. After about 12 minutes or so, it had stabilized out 168. That's 42 degrees different. So the other thing with this hydrolyzed filament that becomes really, really runny is um, you imagine I've got the uh, the five inputs that aren't being used if I'm only printing a single input. And if the filament in those tubes gets runnier and runnier and runnier as time progresses, I have a feeling that retraction is going to need to be different because it's going to work differently if you're retracting very viscous filament. So if you're retracting very runny filament, I would imagine that would be the case. And so it could be that uh, I need to use a high retraction to suit when the filament's really runny, which might be a bit too much or unnecessarily high for when the filament is um, cooler at the beginning of a print. So by effectively putting a heat break between the combining block and the, um, the hot block, the, the business end if you like, I drop the drop the temperature of the filament in the combining block by 30 odd degrees so that should reduce the amount that it will hydrolyze hydrolyzing is a function of temperature and time and the higher the temperature the quicker it will hydrolyze so it will still happen i'm not sure of the exact temperature when it starts out and i think it's around the melting point and i think that can be as low as 120 for pla and there will of course be some conduction of heat through the filament itself. I've seen that before on, on the heat breaks at the top. But it ought to help. And then the other thing that occurs to me, my, um, my first attempt at this heat break, um, the surface area is about 12 mil square on each side. So that's the contact area. If I used something like a thin wall tube, um, the contact area would be a lot less. So I'll get a lot less conduction. And then I could be in the realms where I can actually control the temperature of the combining block by using a second heater. And the other thing that's fairly significant is the um, I, while I was doing it, I measured the temperature inside the um, the heat breaks proper inside those tubes, 
just above the heat break. This was all done with the um, with the cooler fitted and running, obviously. So I basically measured the temperature at the at the bottom of the on the tube, but at the bottom of the heat break of the um, cooler block. And I was showing about 46 degrees C, which is remarkably cool. The ambient was about 25, but I didn't measure that temperature. Um, before without the heat break so I can't I can't say whether that temperature is any different whether it's a heat break further down or not but it might be and one of the issues again with a mixing hot end is that regardless of how efficient the heat break itself is heat does conduct up through the filament itself when it's static and it's not moving forward so eventually with PLA on a glass transition temperature as low as around 60 degrees C um, it doesn't take much for that to start to swell and block a uh, block a heat break so if I can reduce the temperature of the filament underneath uh, the main heat breaks then that would also reduce um, any conduction up through the filament itself so at the moment I'm using PTFE lined heat breaks um, because that's the only way to stop them blocking when you've got this situation where the filament isn't moving forward and it's just sitting there at print temperature. But it could be, if I, if I can reduce that temperature um, even more, then I can do away with the PTFE liner, which means then I can print pretty much, or, or I can print at much higher temperatures and or use exotic filaments. So what I might do, I'll see how this goes, and then I might try... Um, fitting a more efficient heat break in between the in between the combining block and heat break, just a tube, thin tube, and then I can add a heater to the top block, so I can have the the two zones. I can have the the, the hot thingy and then a warm zone, or that can be anything it likes. Um, if I've got a really efficient heat break in there, I can control that temperature with a second heater. And or, if I fitted kind of fins on here and maybe even a fan, I can I can actually cool this further than that. So the filament itself, filament path, is 1.8 mil right the way through that tube and right the way through through the combining block, right the way down there, it's all 1.8 mil. So filament, you can push cold filament right the way through. So I'm quite excited by that. Opens up all sorts of. Um, possibilities but um, first thing I'm going to do is test this as it is um, and see how things are looking um, and then I shall make a decision on whether I'm going to remake the combining block to take another heater uh, or not and or whether it's worth pursuing uh, a more efficient heat break in between the, the hot block and the combining block so um, that's about it for now um, See you next time.